All right, guys, put your headphones on if you want to. Can you hear me? Everybody hear me okay? Yep. yep. Hmm, does it sound weird? Mm -hmm. Is it what you expected it to sound like? No. No? Not really. No? Not really. And then if you want to adjust your volume, you can just turn your knobs here a little bit, but it probably is pretty close to where you want it. Sound good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for coming in, Kira <laughs> and Eli. You guys look adorable. <laughs> is this what you expected it to, to look and feel like? No, no. Not exactly. <laughs> what did you think it was going to be like? Um, I don't know. I didn't think it would be like this, though. So you guys have been asking, Eli specifically has been asking for weeks now to come on the podcast. And we were a little <laughs> hesitant because, you know, it's a podcast. And we were like, I don't know if we should have the kids on. But you guys have been asking. So here it is. Today's the day. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Today's the day. <laughs> so what's new? What's happening in life, guys? What is it like to be 8 and 11 years old living in the boonies of North Idaho? How's life treating you? Good. I like it. You like it? What's your favorite thing about living out here? Uh, a lot of things. I like Idaho because like, it's very quiet, but there is enough there. There's enough stuff to do? Yeah, but like, I like quiet spaces. I'm with you. I'm with you, buddy. Yeah. How about you, Kira? I like going like on walks and seeing animals and stuff. Yeah. How about the horsies? Yeah, I like the horses too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what's new in life, guys? What's going on? Mm, not really anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just a lot of ro rodeoing and taking care of farm animals and such. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay, well... Let's get to the nitty gritty of this. So you're eight years old now, Eli. Mm -hmm. What are your big plans for the future? Rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation. Rodeo. Tell us about it. How do you get into rodeo? Uh, here, I went to a rodeo like a long time ago and I just wanted to do it after watching it. <laughs> Why? You talking about the PBR when we went to the PBR or even the <laughs> local one here? You liked it? Yeah. Even seeing those guys get knocked out after falling off of the bull, you still want to do it? Yeah. <laughs> You're not afraid? Well, I mean, I don't know about professionally, but maybe just amateur. You just want to try it. You've had a lot of interests, huh? Mm -hmm. Over time. You had, what? when I was a police officer, you wanted to be a cop. Remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. You did a police t-shirt. Mm -hmm. You wanted to be a pilot. For a while, you still want to do that? You skipped way ahead. There, he wanted to be a paleontologist there for a while. Oh, we were all Jurassic the Park days. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. I remember those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And then it was all fighter pilot. And now we're going cowboy. Yep. Yep. That is quite the evolution, buddy. The man mm. of many interests. What about you, Kara? What are your big plans for the future? Mm, jam. <laughs> <laughs> Just jam. Just jamming. So what? It, tell us about your your jam. Um, well, I want to have a business named This Is My Jam and sell <laughs> jams on it, like different kinds, like spicy kinds, peach kinds, just a bunch of different kinds. I love it. I think that's a great idea. Me too. You're going to do that from here, from home? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For my garden. What is your logo going to look like? Mm, it's going to be like a wood table and there's going to be like a jam, like a, like a strawberry jar? jam. Yeah. Like You've a already jar thought jam. about this, huh? Yeah, yeah, she's been thinking about it. So, Kira, you've been doing gymnastics as well. So, I've noticed that you've been kind of not as into the horse thing and more into gymnastics now. So, is that your, your new passion? Yeah, I've liked gymnastics for a year now. I don't know why. Yeah, what do you like about it? I don't know, just mostly it gets you kind of in shape, like flexible and stuff. Yeah, is it a challenge? A little. Yeah. That's cool. Are you guys nervous? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys seem like not Why nearly nervous? as talkative as you normally do. I don't know. We're in the tiny home just hanging out and having a chit chat. Yeah. You normally are much more wordy than you're being now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Eli, not only do you have all these other interests, but you're, you're quite the inquisitive child. You usually have about 5,000 questions a day for us. So wh why are you such a curious kid? Uh, I don't know. I just am. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that, mom. <laughs> There's a lot to know. Yeah. And you know a lot. 
dates and stuff. How did you get into that? Like you can tell us the dates of television shows and movies and pretty much any event in history. How do you memorize all these dates? Uh, usually like just watching them and looking at the date of them. And you just remember it in your head? Yeah. You just burn it into your brain. Do you actually see the date in your head when you think about it? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> History is pretty fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what's it like being back in the tiny home since we don't spend a lot of time back here anymore? Is it kind of weird? Yeah, it's kind of weird that we lived in here once. Yeah, do you guys miss it at all? Mm, a little. I feel like we were a lot more close, like school used <laughs> together. Literally. Yeah. Way closer. <laughs> we were physically closer. Yes. Yeah. You remember when we first moved into the house and we were talking about how everything seemed so far away? You remember that? Yeah, I Because didn't... we got so used to being so close to each other and close to everything in the trailer and then in here. And it was really, really weird to be in the house. Yeah, I yeah. was literally did not know what to do in the house because I wasn't used to it. Yeah, that was <laughs> weird. It was a weird time. Very exciting time, though. Yeah. So let me ask you a question while we have cameras turned on here. Is mom a good teacher? Is she a good homeschool teacher? Ooh. Yes. Yeah, what makes you say that? Well, I don't know. She teaches us a lot. Yeah. She's done a really good job over the years, huh? Yeah. 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 You think you could go to regular school and just have it be smooth sailing you just work your way right in there no problem or would it be kind of weird it'll be very weird you guys ever think about that what it would be like yeah i think about that a lot actually mm -hmm. yeah is that something you'd like to try someday do you think um maybe but i don't really know if i'd like it why because like you're away from home for a while <laughs> no pajamas no doing school in your pajamas <laughs> yeah. yeah you gotta get up early and yeah. go and ride the bus and well, maybe it would be fun, though. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't really ever want to try school. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not? Why? What do you mean? It's just weird, like getting on a bus really early and going to school and getting home at dinner time. It just sounds weird. Yeah, it's very different from how we live our lives, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We don't have a lot of separation in our family. That's something that a lot of families... Are, they're different. They wake up in the morning and then they get on their s separate cars and buses and trains and then they go to their workplaces or their school and then they come back at the end of the day. Yeah. But our family's just always together all the time, seven days a week, <laughs> 24 hours a day. Yeah. And that's all you guys know. And when you guys do leave, we are all so happy when you come home. <laughs> when we leave like for the day? Yeah. yeah. If we're like running errands or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels weird to be apart, huh? Yeah. 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 That's a very special thing. Do you realize that? Yeah. Mm hmm A lot of people, a lot of families don't necessarily operate like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never even spent one night away from mom. I know. No. No. Uh, now, there is Kaimani, and he's he's going to be 14, and he's never woken up and not had me home. I've never gone off on a girl's weekend or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really me. I don't really go party it up with the girls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of everybody getting older, do you think that it's weird? I don't care. You brought this up with me before. You think it's weird that Novea is about to be an adult? Yeah, because like when I was born, she was younger than any of us right now. She was six. Yeah. So you remember her being relatively young, right? I remember her being younger than me. Yeah. I remember her being like 12-ish, like 11 maybe. So what makes it weird now that she's older? Well, she's just doing different things like dating and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. You guys are never going to do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Eli? When are you going to start dating? 18, 17-ish. So, oh, yeah. Any special ladies on your list? Any Anyone on the horizon that you've been keeping an eye on? No. Not, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> The only special lady in your life is mom. Oh, goodness. Come <laughs> on. Come on. I'll that's tell a, your girlfriend. That's a good question. Is it just mom? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the attaboy. <laughs> what about you, think Kira? About it. Mm, but I want to start dating at 18. That's the plan? Yeah, and get married at like 22-ish. 22? Yeah. That's young. 
That is young. <laughs> How many kids are you guys going to have, you think? Um, three. You have three kids? Three or four. How about you, Kara? I want to have at least three. Well, I want to start with one for a while and then maybe have two. I don't know about three, though. Yeah. You're just going to start with one? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we're getting all this on camera. That's why we're doing this, so we can watch this one day. Isn't it fun to watch some of our old videos like we were just doing? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of weird, huh, to see everybody getting older, including mom and I. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. So what are you most excited about? In, like, the future? Yeah. A lot of stuff. Like, being in an actual rodeo. That's something. <laughs> Back to the rodeo. <laughs> Like, that's something I, like, actually get excited about sometimes. So if they're like, in next up is Eli Souza on his loyal steed Lexan, you're going to be like, woo. Yeah. That's what, you're, <laughs> that's what we're going to hear? Yep. Yeah. You think that you'll bring Lexan to your first rodeo? I hope. Yeah. You guys are becoming good friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Kira? Mm, I'm most excited to start a family and build my house. Oh, Where are you going to build it? In the yard. In the yard. <laughs> <laughs> right next to ours. Yeah. What happens if this husband of yours at 22 years old doesn't want to live in your parents' yard? Mm. I don't think I'll stay with him then. <laughs> well, why? Because I want to live here with you. I don't want to go live somewhere else. Yeah, but what if you love him a lot and he wants to go live somewhere else? I talk about. It. <laughs> I'll talk him into it. You have learned from mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true because the man is the head, but the woman is the neck. It's the Greek thing, My right? Big fat Greek wedding. Yeah, and then and the woman can turn the head any way that they want. Yeah, I, let's I talk about you. cold plunging, man. How's the cold plunging been going? Good. I, I don't know if I'm going to keep doing it. Why? When I'm an adult. Why? Because, like, if I'm single and I'm an adult, I don't think I'm going to be, like, one day on my phone being, like, I'm going to get in a cold bath for, like, <laughs> five minutes. I, I don't think I would ever do that. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Kira, have you ever done a cold plunge with us? Yes. I've done, like, a few in the summer with Kamani. Yeah, I was going to say, when it's warm outside, right? Yeah. You guys all hop in there together? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Is is you think that's going to make for a really fun memory later in life, stuff like that? Yeah. Like when you guys were playing in the back of our truck. Somebody want to explain this to me? <laughs> it's Eli's girlfriend. Oh, Eli. <laughs> and it's all full of water in the summertime. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite memory so far from being here in Idaho? Um, usually when we just moved here and we were playing with sticks. <laughs> yeah, that's that's mine too. Yeah. You know it's weird, that's my favorite time period too, is when we first moved here and we really didn't have all that much and we were living in the trailer. Those are good times, huh? Yeah. We we're doing a lot of fires at night and you guys were just keeping yourselves occupied playing outside. That was a great time. Yeah. Yeah. So things. do you guys think you'll live like this out here, out in the country life, or do you think you'll move back to the city where there's more going on? I don't really like the city. I'm more like an introvert. Introvert? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'll go to the, like, city or, like, a town maybe someday, but I think I'm mostly going to stay with you guys. I think I'm going to... You make your mom very happy right now. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna move to like a few miles away from here. Oh, that's not really the city. <laughs> that's only where the gas station is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's all you need. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, the, so by the city you mean like town? Yeah. Oh. But I might go to city sometime. Oh, for the day or to move? For the day. Oh. Okay. That's how I like cities too. I like them for the day. <laughs> yeah you like going shopping and then going home yeah mm. <laughs> that's right yeah carrie you're you always want to go places and then as soon as we get there you're like i want to go home you've done that since you were little you would be like i want to go to the park or i want to go to this party or i want to go whatever and then we would get there and then you'd be like i want to go home you would always do that yeah they always seemed more fun 
Yeah. Stuff always sounds real fun and then you go and then you get there. Some people have really, I think that's the difference between introverts and extroverts and you guys are kind of our two introverts. Yeah. And well, I think Nevaeh is really the only extrovert of the family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because for Kaimani's sure. a bit of an introvert too. He's extremely introverted. Yeah. yeah. So I think our batteries get drained pretty easily and it doesn't help when you have a very close-knit family of introverts, because then we just assure each other that it's totally normal and not to go outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. We're like, you're like, I want to go home. I'm like, me too. Let's go. (laughs) And then we go home and then we stay home. So maybe you guys will marry extroverts and that'll encourage you to get out there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So Kira, you want to do some pretty crazy stuff in life. You're our daredevil child. Mm. What are some of the crazy things that you have planned? Um, I really want to go skydiving, but the most of it all, I want to go bungee jumping so bad. Kira, I can't, Kira. I think you're on your own with that. Can we just watch you? Yeah. Yeah? Why do you want to bungee jump? That sounds painful. Well, it's like literally just a free fall. You can fall like just, you just fall and then it catches you. (laughs) You like the feeling of falling? Yeah, I like the pit feeling. (laughs) Eli's like, nope. (laughs) You want to ride bulls? You what are you talking about? 3,000 pound angry. Would a bull give you a pit feeling? No. No, it wouldn't give you a pit feeling, but that's crazy but it dangerous could though. Crush you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are both kind of daredevils. You both want to do stuff that we would probably never do, and I think that's kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Kamani said for his, my 18th birthday, he'll take me skydiving. He's going to just take you and he's going to stay in the airplane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't see that boy jumping out of an airplane. No, there's no way. Remember when you guys went rock climbing? Yeah. I remember when he wanted to go rock climbing and it turned out that you were really good at it? <laughs> I made it to the top. You did make it to the top. I think brother got a little perturbed. Because it was his birthday and he really wanted to, but he just couldn't bring himself to do it. <laughs> was yeah. that the wall like 20 or 40 feet? I think it was like 40 feet. It was a very tall wall. I it was... was- I was amazed at what you were doing. That was crazy. It was a 48 feet. 48 foot wall? Yeah. Is I that think, what it said? Yeah, I think it was 48 feet. It was really high. I was impressed. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I looked down and I could just see your guys' heads. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, you didn't get scared? No. Really? It's so weird that you suddenly became a daredevil just because we I pushed you to ride a roller coaster. Remember your first roller coaster ride? Yeah. I still have it on my phone. My face. Your, your face on the drop. You were so scared. And look at you now. Now you're talking about skydiving. Yeah, well, um, it on um, my first roller coaster, I wasn't really nervous. The reason my face was like that on the drop is because I had never experienced a pet feeling like that. So. Yeah. I think it's funny that you're such a daredevil with stuff like roller coasters and zip lining and rock climbing and bungee jumping and all of that. But then like the horses make you very nervous. Why? What is it about horses that make you so nervous compared to all these other crazy things that you want to do? Like it's because mostly because I feel under control and all the other things. Like if something was to go wrong, I could control it. Skydiving? Sky <laughs> like if your parachute doesn't work, what are you going to do? <laughs> you ride it out. Yeah, but that's just like something I'm going to do once. So Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you just feel like you're out of control on a horse because they're their own entity? Yeah, like nobody controls you. You control yourself. So That makes sense. Like they have their own brain. Yeah, but now you don't want to go bungee jumping or skydiving or any of that kind of stuff, but yet the horses and apparently bulls now don't scare you. Uh, I don't know why. (laughs) Because, like, skydiving, she said that you can control it, but I feel like you can't if your parachute doesn't work. Like, you're like 1,000 feet in the air. What are you going to (laughs) do? You're not going to do anything. You're going to plummet is what you're going to do. Where you fall? I'm not trying to talk you out of it, Kira. I'm just saying. No, Scary I'm, stuff. I'm going. I'm sure you are. I'll, I'll come watch. Okay. Speaking of rodeo, Eli, who is it that you ho- are hoping that mom and I get to talk to at some point? J.B. Mooney. J.B. Mooney. Who's J.B. Mooney? Uh, a professional bull rider world champion. In the PBR, right? Mm-hmm. And he's, he like the gr- he's like the greatest guy of all time. Yeah. Safe to say? 
Yeah. And is yeah. he your favorite, like mom asked? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you like about him? Oh, I don't know. Because like when I was first in it, everything was just like J.B. Moody, J.B. Moody. And I was like, <laughs> who is he? And I just like like everything about him. Like he's a world champion and stuff. So I just started liking him. And then I see all this stuff about him and I get to like him even more. So you've just learned a lot about him. Yeah. What happened to him more recently? Oh, he broke his neck. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm talking about, buddy. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so now, he's retired now, right? Yeah. Isn't his like neck paralyzed? Uh-uh. Uh, no, but they put something on his neck so he can't move it for like almost like five months. Really? Mm-hmm. Has it been that long yet? Is he still wearing it now? Yeah. Yeah, he is. And he broke it like uh, three, four months ago. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe he's got some time now. Maybe we can get him on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see if we can figure out how to reach out to J.B. Mooney. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe somebody knows him. What did you think of meeting Tom? Wasn't that pretty cool over in Montana? Yeah. Yeah, he's an ex-rodeo guy. Mm-hmm. What did he tell you? Uh, He told me to be very careful and he told me stories about his rides. Yeah. Super nice guy, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Something I would like to get into more is running. Yeah? You should come running with come on, Anna. Yeah. I was going to run today, but then I forgot. You did a good job helping me with my, my mileage when we just ran a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice weather. Mm-hmm. I actually don't mind running in the wintertime. We should start running. You know, make it a New Year's resolution. Yeah. So yoga, more yoga, because you've been doing really, really well with the yoga, and then running. And it was your New Year's resolution last year to start with the splits or try to achieve a split. Yep. And you can do it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was awesome. You saw that through. I think you're the only one of us that kept your uh, New Year's resolution. Oh, well, I did a really good job because I didn't make one. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. And so I didn't let myself down. Didn't you make it to make your bed every single day? Uh, <laughs> How'd that work out? Um, I've made it four times, I think, since moving into the house. And it's only if... Someone's coming over, and for some reason, they're going to be in there. Yeah. Or if we have a, mo- a meeting yeah, on the phone and it's do, in the background. <laughs> we do our Zoom calls in there, and so we'll... But I don't even really make it fully that way. I'll just, like, yeah. smooth it. What do you guys think about YouTube and what we do? You think it's weird? Uh, at first, I did. Yeah. Because I didn't really know that what was going on. Me neither. Yeah, like not until not that long ago, I did not know what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I didn't know what YouTube was. Like, I didn't even realize you guys were ever filming. No, well, that's good. I'm yeah. glad that you don't realize that we're filming because we never want to invade your privacy or or disrupt your day-to-day life by having cameras and film. So... Even though we're doing a podcast right now and there's two cameras staring right at you. Yeah, but they wanted to do the podcast. I know. I'm yeah. glad. It makes me happy to hear you say that. I'm glad that we it hasn't become so invasive to where you you feel weird about it. Yeah, yeah. I've only known what like YouTube is for like a year. Yeah, that's good. Are you a fan of YouTube? Yeah, I watch a lot of YouTube. Who are your favorite YouTubers? What are your favorite channels? You guys. Oh, um, that's nice of you to say. Um, Jordan Matter. You got to meet them, them right at Vid Summit. That was pretty neat. Yeah. You were like, I know that guy, and I'm like, no, I don't think you know that guy. And you're like, I know him, and you just had zero fear. He was having lunch and having like a meeting, and you just walked right up and were like, tap 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 tap. I watch you. Zero hesitation. Yeah. Yeah. And then you gave them a movie idea on what happened, or they, a video idea. Um, they did it, and they said my name in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. they did, huh? That was pretty cool. How many views does that video have now? Mm, a few million. Yeah, that's crazy. Like six million or something last I checked. Really? Curious idea, yeah. Wow. Pretty neat. And then Eli, you were more recently an actor in a YouTube video. How was that? That was cool because it was my... Whoa, you okay? <laughs> you all right? <laughs> yeah. Woo, it's like a bull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was cool because it was like my first acting experience. Yeah, was it weird? You did a great job, man. You did so good. I was so proud of you. That was a long day, 18 hours of filming that first day. And then you guys had to get up really early and film the next day as well. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Was it neat seeing you as an actor on a movie? Yeah. That was professionally edited. Yeah, that was interesting and weird. It's a good experience though, right? Yeah. yeah. Especially because you're into filmmaking. Mm-hmm. What kind of movies do you make? The stop motion. Yeah, your stop yeah, motion I stuff, man. Stop motion. All day, every day, bro. Yeah, I've made like 20 stop motions and I, not that long ago, learned how to use a green screen. Yeah, I don't even know how to do that. Me either. He just took a green sheet and then it just worked. <laughs> That's cool. Mm-hmm. You guys think you'll make movies when you get older? What do you think? I don't know if I will, but maybe either, come on. I've thought about being a director until I realized, like, I want to move to Hollywood, though. Why not? Because I don't like big cities and people all over the place. You have no privacy. It's just... Just not where you want to live? No. You don't have to stay here. I know we've had a lot of talks and discussions, and it was kind of mom and I's plan to... Make sure that you guys always had a place to to call home and come back to or even build a house like you were talking about earlier, right? But you guys understand that you don't have to do that because that's just what mom and I always talk about, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm glad to hear, hear that. Yeah. You guys get to decide whatever you want to do and wherever you want to go. Yeah. I feel like I would like to travel someday, but yeah. like not live there. Where would you like to travel to? Mm, Greece. Um, I don't know. Just random sa- states. To see what they're like. Random yeah. states and countries? Yeah. 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 You, want a, you want a road trip? Do you even remember our road trip when we went to Yellowstone and stuff? Um, I remember Mount Mushroom. Mount, <laughs> Mount Mushroom? <laughs> yeah, no. It really Mount Mush. Okay, here's the confusion here. Is we went on that same trip, we, went to, we drove to Mount Rushmore, and the kids at the time were, were calling it Mount... Mushmore. Mushmore. <laughs> <laughs> so Mount ever Mushmore. since... It's, still it's kind Mushmore. of always been Mount Mushmore. <laughs> Mount Mushmore. <laughs> Mount Rushmore. Yeah. You remember going there though? Um. Yeah, I remember the faces. How old was she on that trip? Oh, gosh, she was young because Eli was only maybe eighteen months old, so she would have only been not. I'm mean, maybe Three, four? four. Three. Probably just yeah. turned four. That was a good trip. We should do that again. Now yeah. that you guys are older. Eli doesn't even remember it. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't remember. He was that just either. a little baby on that trip. Yeah. What do, we, what do you think of uh, the few trips or the couple trips, I guess, that we've taken in the past couple of years? I think, like, I like trips like that because I don't like staying home forever and I like looking back on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, we at least tried. Yeah. <laughs> Something <laughs> new. We huh? tried California. How was that? Mm, not for me. Do you, like, you like Texas better? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like if I had to live in a big place, I would live in Texas because, like, I like it. It's a clean place. It was very clean, huh? Wasn't that crazy? Not like Portland where we live. Yeah. Portland was great. How much do you guys remember Portland at this point? None. Um, None for you, really? I yeah. used to know how to drive to um, the grocery store, but now I don't know. I shouldn't say Portland Battleground. You guys just have fuzzy memories. Carrie, you played soccer and stuff out there. You remember all that, right? Yeah, I remember soccer a lot. How about our house? Do you have a lot of memories from our old home? Yes. Yeah. I remember that a lot. Like what? What comes to mind? Uh, our kitchen area comes to mind and like our cabinets. <laughs> that <laughs> comes to mind for some reason. When it comes to lot, um, life is just like the outside area and Kamani and Eli's room because we played a lot in there. Yeah. And I remember... Um, the girls' room and the boys' room was, like, connected, kind of. Sort of. You guys had that little hallway there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. a circle with two rooms and, like, just a wall between it. Yeah. And then my room was a little farther away with two doors. Yeah. <laughs> that was an office. Yeah, it was. So now we are just a couple days away from Christmas. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Eli, you were saying that you didn't have your Christmas spirit this year. Do you th- did you find your Christmas spirit or are you still feeling that way? I'm still feeling that way, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What do you mean? What do you, What is Christmas spirit to you? What is it that you think you're lacking this year? Excitement? No, I don't think it's that. I don't know. I think it's the weather, too. I think it's the weather, mostly. Like, I don't like when it's all sunny and, like, looks perfect i want it to be like 
a bunch of snow and all wet and cold. So mm. Mother Nature is throwing a wrench into your Christmas spirit this year. Yes. Yeah, it, it has been a, a mild winter so far. Maybe we'll get snow on Christmas. Would that help? Yes. <laughs> How about you, Kira? I got in like butterflies in my stomach if I think of Christmas a lot. Like, think about waking up at five and looking at my stockings and presents. Five. <laughs> better get better. Look forward to. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, we always wake up really early. We've been watching Christmas movies for about a month now. Yeah. We had to order some more because we were watching the same four movies mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Which Eli is very much like you, where it's just too much. So you look at the look on that face. It's just... <laughs> Not a boy. It's too much Christmas. Not a boy. Well, maybe that's why you haven't found your Christmas spirit because you haven't watched Elf for the sixteenth time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Christmas vacation. <laughs> no, I don't think that's it. If you do that, that's just gonna it. It just gets boring. It doesn't give it you it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't give it you it. <laughs> no Christmas spirit. Something that really gives you Christmas spirits: the music. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, we've had lots of that too. Is that helping? No. No. <laughs> well, I hope you find your Christmas spirit, buddy. What do you guys want for Christmas? What are you hoping for? Uh, I'm hoping for a, a BB gun. Oh. And cowboy chaps. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. You yep. can wear just the chaps like your father. Oh. <laughs> 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 You don't want to hear about that. that is... uh, oh, that's a joke. But... <laughs> How about you, Kara? What do you want? Mm, I don't know. Like maybe some clothes or like some nail acrylics not to wear, but like to practice on a fake hand. Yeah, you're really artistic. Yeah. Maybe I... more so that you and Neve are the most artistic people in our family. Yeah, I like coloring a lot. Yeah, you really like drawing and painting and stuff like that mm -hmm. you showed me that drawing that you just made was that last night mm, yeah the wednesday adams that was really good Did you see that one yeah we got we got her stuff up on the refrigerator very artistic this i don't is, know where you get that from this is the first year that you have not asked for toys do you know that oh. now you're asking for clothes and makeup stuff i didn't ask for makeup well nail stuff and yeah you asked for some fancy face moisturizer <laughs> Last year you were like Polly Pockets and Barbies and now you're like mm, some clothes. I did ask for Barbies. Oh. Barbies is like the one toy I still really like. Yeah, still into it? Yeah, I also like stuffed animals. Yeah, like Squishmallows, right? Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Eli? Are you into any toys still or have you outgrown the toys? Now no. you want a BB gun and chaps. Yes, I really want a BB gun so bad. What are you going to do with it? Shoot grasshoppers. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Last year you were making them houses. Oh, wait, that was praying mantis. No, it was beetles. What were you making houses for last beetles. year? Beetles. Grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. And I also go into like wood piles and I'll just find the praying mantis and I'll just pick them up. <laughs> That's living right there. Yeah. That's some country living as a, as a child in the Sousa family. Yeah. Good times, right? Well, do you guys think this is fun? Yeah. Yes. Do you feel professional? This is your first podcast. Yeah. Yeah. First. Is it everything you hoped for? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of weird hearing your own voice, huh? Yeah. The headphones mm -hmm. weird? Yeah, it's weird hearing your own voice. Like, it sounds different, too. Mm hmm Is it distracting? No. No, I don't find it distracting. No, it makes you really focus in on what we're talking about, though, huh? Yeah. It's kind of intense that way. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. You want to wind this down, Mama? Yeah. You guys want to go play? Sure. Okay. Let's <laughs> like, <"Yep." laughs> get out of here. Well, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. Yep. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. I'm glad we did this. Was this fun? Yeah. yeah. We'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll see you in like a few minutes when we come in the house. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye. All right, Mama, how was that? <laughs> how do you think that went? <laughs> they got to try it. That's what they wanted. Yeah, so we wanted to bring them in here. They actually wanted to come in here just to see what it is that we do. They just kind of have a natural curiosity about things, and uh, I'm glad they got to experience that. So proud of each one of them. Um, that was fun. 
just tried to keep it very lighthearted and hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I don't know, something different. Yeah, they're cute. It'll, it's something to look back on later. And it's always fun. I think everyone should interview their children, you know, because they change so much year by year. Kids are so different. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that we overlook. Like people say, oh, I remember, or which kid was it that said, like, it's so important to write down funny things that they say or get out the camera and interview your kids and ask them some questions or maybe ask them the same questions every year because I, it's fun for them to look back to. Do you ever get out those little, you know, in kindergarten or second grade, you'd have those little books and it was like, what I want to be when I grow up, what's yeah. my favorite color? Who's my best friend? I still have that stuff and like look back at it and be like, oh yeah. Yeah. They're in boxes somewhere for me. At least my stuff is. Yeah. Yeah, it's been really good for us. And we, I mean, we've talked about it very extensively on the podcast about, you know, time changing and us starting to look back and uh, all the kids are getting young, getting older and you do a great job of, of really, you know, you put together all their scrapbooks and stuff and they all have their baby books and all that. And you do a really good job of commemorating all those moments. Um, I, to a lesser extent, I kind of just take mental mental notes and stuff, but that stuff has a tendency to kind of fade away over time. So it's mm -hmm. good that uh, we have that with you and... We, I, I asked them specifically about the YouTube question. That was an interesting answer from Kira, just because we, I feel like we've made a pretty serious conscious effort to be respectful of the kids and the fact that they are so young and it's you and I that made the decision to pursue this and post ourselves on the internet. They mm -hmm. had nothing to do with that. And so we always try to be mindful of that. And so I'm, it's, it was good to hear her response to that. And uh, at the same time, it's kind of weird because kind of like I was just saying, it's so nice to have all these what are essentially for us, you know, home movies mm -hmm. um, that we put together over the years. And it, we, it's reached a point now to where we can look back and go back a few years and see how much everybody's grown, the kids um, in particular. So I'm glad yeah. we have all that. Yeah, it's always such a a discussion, like before birthday parties or yeah. holidays or anything like that. Do we film this? Do we not film this? And most holidays, I don't think any holidays we really film, maybe like little 30 second snippets or whatever that we just save for ourselves, we may share. Yeah, most of the time we we've don't. We've done it, but we've done it strategically. Mm -hmm. um, Eli's birthdays have kind of become a thing that we do make videos on. Yeah. And it's always because he wants that. He's always like, are you making a birthday video this right. year? He loves a birthday video. He loves a dedicated video celebrating the life of Eli. <laughs> yeah, he loves seeing himself on the screen. He watches those over and over and over again. And they are so fun to have. I wish yeah, that really I had are. all the kids' birthday parties documented in the way that we have. It's really weird because those. we don't we don't have a regular it's not a regular thing that we pull up like old mm -hmm. videos from two, three, four years ago uh to watch, but we'll do it occasionally. Mm -hmm. And we were just doing it tonight, coincidentally, um, uh, before we hopped in here. And it's it's so it's just so impact. It's it's unbelievable because there's there are things that we captured on on film that I I don't have a actual memory of. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I'm really glad we have all that. But it does raise an interesting dilemma for for other people like us who do have kids and who mm -hmm. do the YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I guess it's it's everyone's decision to make for themselves. But I probably more so than you. I think I've been very reluctant to include them in what it is that we do online. Yeah, we don't show a lot of them. And I know that is kind of a point of why don't you show your kids more? Why aren't the kids more involved in the build and yeah. things like that? And the reason that the kids are not more involved in the build, one, is because I don't want my kids to feel like they are construction workers and they always have to be out there working. And the kids don't want to yeah, do that. Yeah, they're not employees. They're our kids. Yeah. And we want them to have a childhood and we don't want them to have to be there on really on set when we're filming do you think it would be different if, if we weren't recording do you think that they would be more involved i think that we would have them come out and do more odds and ends jobs for sure like hey you guys we need this cleaned up or that or whatever but when we're filming we try to be pretty respectful of their privacy especially as they get older so mm -hmm. if we do need their help with something this is kind of a discussion that we go into beforehand with hey we're filming this we could really use your help can you guys come out for an hour or two and yeah like we just did with the insulation mm -hmm. and this is again you know this isn't a knock on anybody else like i said everyone gets to decide for themselves but i guess my concern with it is if you look at like child actors and stuff like that it mm -hmm. just it seems to have a very bizarre impact on a person uh developmentally when you know there's always a camera on and they always feel like they're on camera and so if we keep it light and fun like we just did here and they want to do it then i have no problem with that yeah. per se but i never want to be you know, shoving a, a camera in their face unnecessarily just because it'll make for uh, a, a great video segment. Yeah, this is their lives and their yeah. childhood and their privacy and and their home. So we're talking about 
you know, when we film inside the house, we try not to film inside their rooms and things like that because that's their private space. Mm -hmm. And even like we showed the rooms when we were decorating them and Mm -hmm. when we were moving in the day we moved in and everything. But now that they live in those rooms and their stuff is there, we keep cameras out of them. I just think that there's boundaries that need to be respected. And the reason that, yeah, the, the reason the kids aren't more active on the build is because we're filming the build and we don't want them to feel that pressure yeah i think they i would definitely probably have them be more so involved if we weren't recording all the time but mm-hmm. you and i treat it like work and i don't know it's just such a weird thing because you know we're, we're proud of our family we're proud of our kids and and you know we want to capture all of these moments but i don't know i don't know why i just have some weird um something weird happens when you when you throw a camera into the mix and i think that gets lost from a viewership standpoint a lot of times mm-hmm. of, you know because a lot of people like seeing the kids and i get it because there have been a, a number of uh, youtubers that I've seen and, and, and watched over the years where we've seen their kids grow up. And it's always really fascinating to see these kids go from, you know, being young children to now. I mean, we're reaching a point even with our own kid, mm-hmm. uh, kid of them becoming young adults. And, um, you know, people take a very vested interest in young people as they grow. But like, like I said, it's just it's it's it makes for a, a very bizarre internal conflict. And uh, mm-hmm. but nevertheless, I'm, I'm very glad that we have you know, all these videos and memories captured that we can refer back to at any given time. It makes me, it makes me so worked up and more like we were talking about it the other day when we were watching a couple of the old videos, you walked out of the room and you're like, I can't, I can't do this. So I little. can't watch it. I know. Yeah. Kira and Eli, they were almost like babies when we moved here. Mm-hmm. They were so small and they had the little squeaky voices and it's different now. I don't know. They're just, they're growing so quickly. And Eli's still so small. And four years from now, we'll look at this podcast that we just did today and go, <laughs> yeah. look at how little. Yeah, it's why it's so weird. You don't realize it in the moment, but you're right. Mm-hmm. We will. We'll watch this years from now. Or even the Vea's episode that we did, mm-hmm. you know, earlier uh, this year. We need to get Kaimani on, on here too. Kaimani yeah. is our most reluctant child, I think, when it comes mm-hmm. to to doing all of this. He's probably our most introverted child. Mm-hmm. And he th- he's very uncomfortable in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. But and he doesn't want to be. He wants yeah. to be confident and he wants <laughs> to be on the camera. Yeah. But then when it's on him, he's kind of like, but he just did his acting debut oh. in in this movie trailer. This is the same one that we were talking to Eli about. Yeah. So the YouTube channel Styx made a movie trailer on the life of Zach King. And Kaimani loves Zach King. Zach King is a you know movie maker, movie creator, and Kaimani makes his own movies as well. And he got to share one of his movies with Zach. And that was a really neat moment for him. And then to be asked to play young Zach King in this movie was really, really cool for him. And it, it's just if he ever ends up becoming a movie maker, which he has a lot of interest in editing and, and creating videos, um, that would just be really neat that he got to play one of the greatest of all kind in time, you know, like. Yeah, it's really interesting um, to think where it is they're going to be in life. Yeah. It's been so fascinating to watch them grow from these tiny little uh, human seedlings to now becoming young adults and teenagers. It happens in the blink of an eye and it's, it's just so odd, but it's so it's so gratifying. and It's, it's interesting. Just a weird thing. Yeah. Yeah, God, it's so interesting to watch because you're almost sidelined once your kids hit eight really i mean i'm almost sidelined on in eli's life and like i'm always trying to find ways to nurture those many many interests he has like we only got into like one percent of them today um he has so many interests and i'm always trying like okay he needs a costume for that and he needs this and that and whatever because he gets so into it Mm -hmm. and so i want to foster those interests but uh you're still almost sidelined as a parent because they just start choosing things like, I, I thought Kira was going to be my horse girl. You know, her and I were going to ride horses. I was I was going to teach her, and this was going to be this magical thing, and I built it up in my head, and she was into it, and we were holding hands walking out there, and it was such a beautiful thing. I loved it so much, all spring and summer. And then all of a sudden, she kind of stopped asking. And she's like, well, I think I want to do gymnastics now. And I'm like, well, you can still do horses too. And she's like, hmm. <laughs> And I can't make her love them. Like I can't yeah. make her like them. And that was your dream going into it. That was your your vision yeah, that you had. That's not necessarily the vision that she had. And that's something that I think feel like we're both kind of learning as parents currently. Yeah. Well, because she was like, I love horses. And it was horse stickers and horse pajamas and horse everything. And I thought, oh, she's just like me. She's going to have this 
deep love and desire to ride horses. Mm -hmm. And then she did until she she got the reality of it. Yeah. And the novelty kind of wore off. And and then she was like, uh, Mom, <laughs> I think it took her a long time to tell me. So I think I think she'll she'll still ride, I'm sure. I think it's something she still has a general interest in. I mean, she watches Heartland I know, every day. But when I saddle up Debbie, like when she sees me doing it, I literally watch her kind of retract into the house. And yeah. I'm like, she don't want to ride. So I'll yeah. just ride Debbie. And then Eli will usually come out. Yeah, Eli loves the horses. Yeah, because Eli wants to do roping. And, um, and so that was kind of an unexpected thing. Yeah, I was not expecting it from Eli. So he, yeah. he's the one that... and But now he doesn't want to ride the pony. He's kind of bored with her because she won't really do anything. She's, you know, she's a hokey little old pony. He, he wants my horse. So he asked me today if he could buy my horse for me. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to buy less. One dollar. One dollar <laughs> sell him lexan for one dollar what am i gonna ride so he's got his eye on my horse now this discussion is, is bringing me back to the point i was trying to make before but did a really poor job of trying to articulate is that it doesn't matter the vision that you have for your children ultimately it is them who get to decide for themselves what it is that they want to do for their lives is that how do you feel about that moving forward with 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 uh them getting older as they become adults and they you know they inevitably stumble and make mistakes and uh Try to just figure things out for themselves. I mean, I kind of thought that I would be, that you would be better at it and I would be mm -hmm. worse at it because I'm kind of a control freak in all aspects of life. I am doing horribly. And, but with the kids, I think I'm doing a better job at letting them be. So I told you, I don't want to get into great de detail about this because again, I'm trying to be respectful of our kids, but I told you before that I feel like um, it's going to hit you differently with the boys as they get older. Maybe. And because our two girls are older than our two boys and I'm getting to experience this before you. I don't know if that even makes sense, no, but our, this is just... Well, this, this, this Kaimani's is a, older than Kira. You said our two girls are older yeah, than Yeah, but Nevea is older than Kaimani. What yeah. I'm saying is Nevea is hitting all of these milestones before Kaimani is. And, and you know, that's that's her equivalent as far as the, the sibling genders go. And so you're going to have to deal with that from a motherly perspective of your oldest boy yeah. your, your firstborn son who you share a birthday with mm -hmm. you haven't hit the the stage that i'm currently at with Nevea, who is her who is his equivalent we share a birthday yeah and she was my firstborn child my, my daughter the one that i was supposed to you know it's it's what it's what changed my life for me as a man um and so yeah you're having a hard time with that oh. <laughs> okay that puts it lightly yeah. you're struggling with that struggling uh deeply so do you think that there's any boy that nevea could ever meet that you'd be like yep i like this one I don't or do you think that this. that's just impossible for <laughs> any guy to ever live up to dad's standards i feel I like know. it's meet the parents you know where the mother-in-law is like no one's ever been good enough for your pam so I walked out of the room when we were watching Heartland the other night and the grandpa was like, Seriously? no parent is ever ready. Like as, as a parent, you're always with your kids. You're like, no, I, again, for me, it's like, you know, I got to keep you safe. I got to keep you, you know, it's me. I got to watch after you. I got to guide you. I got to protect you. I got to keep you safe. And then, uh, I can't talk about this. And they, and they just walk out that door. <laughs> no, it's just, it makes it hard. You know, like we, we talk about all the time. Like she just, you know, she does her own thing. And and that's good. You got to root for that. You got to hold for that. And yeah. it's, a, it's a normal part of growing up. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're definitely struggling with uh, our oldest getting. I mean, I I don't love it. Obviously, I liked when they were all small and I had total control in the living room of the kids. But I think as a girl, I think she's a smart kid. Um, I think she'll probably do some stupid stuff like we always did, but you kind of almost have to hope for that because there's no adventure in life if you don't stumble a little bit and do some stupid stuff. Yeah, and I know that. If it's always just perfect and you do exactly what you're supposed to do and everything works out perfectly and there's no struggle, like there's no adventure in that. There's no mm -hmm. magic life in that. There's, you get to be older and you're like, I never took any risks. I always was just a perfect and... I don't yeah, know. I, I, I know don't that. want that for them either. I Neither want them I. to go that's, out that's there the, and do that's some That's the internal stumble. battle, though. That's that's the, that's what it is that I'm, I'm grappling with. Is that you know I I full heartedly understand what it is you're you're saying, and I I you know I agree with you. Um, conversely, on the other other side of it, though, it's just you know it's just hard. It's just an adjustment, and it's adjustment. It's that that uh, felt as though it came out of nowhere, so it seems <laughs> abrupt. 
<laughs> Even though I know it isn't. It, it just, it feels abrupt. It was there for a long time. I think you just didn't want to see it. Mm-hmm. Like it's been there for a while. And, and I think there was struggle in that too, because the lifestyle that we live and the way that we chose to raise our children and everything makes it harder because you go from being this protected little bubble to all of a sudden people start infiltrating the bubble, friends, boyfriends, uh, boys you don't even know. Like, it's just, it's crazy. And, and now all of a sudden the bubble kind of bursts and you don't have control anymore. And it's, it's a hard thing. And I think every parent deals with it, but I think it's hitting us all at once. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you in a sense. I think it's, I think it's hard for a lot of parents. I don't think it's just us and the way that we do things. I think, I don't know, maybe, maybe so, but it's just, uh, it's tough either way. Yeah. So, well, we got two little ones that are still so, so sweet and innocent for the next five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And, but that makes it hard too, because I know, yeah when, uh, I know it goes, you know, really, really quickly, literally in the blink of an eye. Kira will be the the, the current Nabeo. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, hopefully she never gets a boyfriend. Man, it's just turning into a real bummer again. I don't Damn. know. You it's just you're. Why are you gonna bring this kind of stuff up? I, you me? brought Holy it cow. up. You brought it up. <laughs> but yeah, I think a little struggle when Kaimani starts dating. I'm. No girl's gonna be good enough for Kaimani, and the first time she gives him any heck or guilt trips him or anything like that, like I'll hate her until she breaks up with him and then breaks his heart and then I'll be sad that she did that, you know? So th- there's no winning for these poor people trying to meet our children. You know, it's been weird as I feel like rather than we reached a point where rather than providing our children uh, with guidance, it's to the point where I'm having to provide myself with guidance. <laughs> I have to tell myself to shut up sometimes or keep my mouth shut. Uh, just weird. Yeah. All you can do is give them guidance and tell them what you think, but you don't get to make their decisions for them. Yeah. And in trying to do so, you just, you isolate them. You push them away by trying to make their choices for them. You have to tell them what you think, tell them what you think they should do, and then give them the freedom to either mess that up, which is likely, and then come back and say, you were right. I mean, my dad gave me a lot of advice. Mostly about guys. And then after the fact, I'd be like, yeah, no, he was right on that. <laughs> but I wasn't trying to hear it at the time. Yeah, no, I, I was it. never going to hear it at the time. <laughs> like I was, he never was like, I don't like this guy. And I was like, okay, dad, you're right. Yeah. I'm not going to see you anymore. Like that never, ever happened. And I don't know, I don't know that that ever happens in any young girl's life unless they're, com- they live in complete fear of their parent, which you don't want. Yeah. In retrospect, I don't know. Uh, to, to young parents out there prepare yourself mentally mm. because yeah it just doesn't get any easier um, no, and i'm sure there are people who you know are are older than us and have children who are older than us who would be giving me advice in this moment yeah but, they've survived this stage this stage yeah. is hard but then once you survive it like i've heard so many older parents say oh my youngest just got married thank god they're <laughs> all married like the dating is done the crazy teen years all of that and they're just so relieved when they're all settled. They're like, whew, okay. Mm-hmm. But, then, you know, there's still going to be stuff that comes up. Sure. So sure. I, you're never really done parenting, but we're being sidelined. And it's really hard. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Big time. It's the worst. I don't want my problem is I feel like I, I have like this unhealthy uh, approach or so much. <laughs> I, no, I, I seriously, like, I, it's just like you said, it, it's kind of just caught me off guard. In a number of ways, seeing them get older, it's I, like it's such a tremendous, tremendous blessing. We have great kids. Damn, man, you can't do just, it. Yeah, just tough. Nevaeh, you are killing your father <laughs> <laughs> by aging. <laughs> no, nah, it's not just hurts everybody. <laughs> I know. Well, it makes it worse. You're right. It makes it worse because when we saw how fast she went from eight to eighteen, mm-hmm. and then we look at our eight year old. We're like, crap, it's almost over. Yeah. And but when we had her and she was eight, we thought we had forever with her because she was only eight. And now we know how quick that goes. You know, this year was the first year they didn't ask to see Santa. None of them. <sighs> see, I didn't even think about that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Last year. Last time. It hasn't was come the up at last all. time. It literally has not even come up. So think about that. So last year when we took them to see Santa, that was that was the last time. And we didn't know it. Mm-hmm. Like there's You're not so, trying to make me feel better. I don't like it. I don't it's appreciate just, that. There's, there's like new stuff that's going to come, but like 
we have a lot of laughs in our life right now. This is the last time this is going to happen. This is the last no, time. Just, just stop and so, bumming me out. well, I mean, Seriously. so Oof. it's hard. You have to balance that with with the first because we also have a lot of firsts headed our way. Yeah, but that's an adjustment too. But you have to embrace them in the same way. Mm. Yeah, that's easier said than done for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the most flexible person, Melissa. I don't know if you've met me. I know. Yeah, no, I, I know that about you. Yeah, you're. Um, it's not even that you're not flexible. You're rigid. <laughs> truth and so that's going to be a hard it's going to be hard because new people are going to start entering our lives and we've been the six of us six mm -hmm. people strong for so long mm -hmm. i mean you even had a hard time this sounds really weird this is really revealing i don't know if i oh yeah think about it first <laughs> i was just gonna say you even had a hard time every time that we would add a baby to our own family you would have a moment what? of struggle where you were like I like the dynamic that we have. Like we would have when we had two kids. When we had one kid, you were like, I don't no, know no, no, if I no, want to. No, no, no. The weird two. transition was from was from two to three. And here's the reason why. So Nabea was first born. She was born on my birthday. Kaimani, second born. He was born on your birthday. Mm -hmm. We were a, a team of four. Very well balanced. It was like symmetry. It was like perfect symmetry. And then throw another baby into the mix love cure to death she was my tiny little angel. angel um but it just it was like a weird thing i'm like hey, wait hold on a second now we're, gonna, we're losing that symmetry we're losing that balance and we're gonna be outnumbered on top <laughs> of it like that's ah, too much and but it all like, works out cares? it's just yeah it's um it's weird news to react to when you find out about it and yeah i mean i guess i guess that's sort of true and then not, you got used but to not that. to make it sound no 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 that's not what i mean but like you just don't like change any change yeah i really Good don't change bad I really don't. change that's a knock on me that's a, that's a me issue completely i realize that anytime that there's any kind of like moves and stuff unless it's something i'm excited about like when we came here if you it's were very emotional about coming here um, I was stressed about coming here because it was a it was a massive massive risk that we were taking on. I knew that if we we failed miserably that it, miserably that it was going to leave me in a really bad place. <laughs> so, because I feel like it's my responsibility as you know the the quote unquote head of household, father, uh, breadwinner to to make sure that we have everything it is that we collectively need as a family. And so if, if you know we were struggling and coming out here, I knew that that was going to make me feel like crap about myself. So. So that was a big risk. But I was still excited at the same time of the possibility, right? And the fact that we were, I felt like it was a, it was a bold move on our part and we were doing something that, like I said, I, I, was, I wanted to do. I, I had a genuine desire to want to do that as opposed to having something just come out of nowhere that was outside of my control. Like I didn't even have, you know, working knowledge yeah. of it. I didn't anticipate it whatsoever. So I think that's the difference. Why do you think you resist change so much? Because I kind of like change. Like I like constantly growing mm. and changing and evolving and adding. Yeah. And, and it's not that I don't, it just, it depends on what you're talking about. And when it comes to, to our family, again, it's, you know, my family means the world to me. And, uh, I, I, I don't know when it's, when it's something that, that, like I said, is outside of my control that I know is going to affect our family. That's, that's where I struggle. It's not that I don't like change. It's not like, I don't, I don't like trying new things. It's just, uh, I don't know why I'm that. I mean, I think I, I have a theory as to why I'm that way. And you probably know why I'm that way as well. Um, but I like stability and I like reliability. And I think a lot of the, not to turn this into a therapy session, but I think a lot of it stems from my childhood. So, yeah. <laughs> so tell me. No. no. <laughs> mm -mm. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I think we have a lot of changes ahead of us. We have a lot of new people that will be entering our, our lives in the next, I know, I mean, eventually there's going to be son-in-laws and daughter-in-laws and their parents and their siblings. Leave a comment down below and let me know how it is that I can navigate this in a, in a healthy way that I can make sense of <laughs> uh, for those of you who have been through it before. Yeah, it's been a struggle. And um, this is a really weird transition. I'm, I'm glad we had the kids in here. They really enjoyed themselves. I enjoyed having them here. They just, you know, they're they're young. They're, uh, they've, they've seen us do this, but they haven't actually been in here while mm -hmm. we're doing it. So they were very curious about it about what it looks and feels like and all that. So I could tell they were nervous. Did you see them fidgeting the whole time? They were they were like they very soft spoken and much and quieter than normal. The entire time. These kids, I guarantee you, um, or I, I can assure you that these kids are are crazy and rambunctious. Um in, in our home. Uh Eli is constantly like hopping. They're wrestling around. Like I have to tell them to knock it off all the time. <laughs> like, but they're they're good kids and uh we're we're so blessed as a family. We really are. Like we're so tremendously blessed and uh it came up on our good symbol living video, right? I was outside working by myself and I just started thinking about things, especially because of this weird chapter and this weird period of our lives that we currently find ourselves in. I started thinking about, you know, Hey, um, 
uh, kind of like I told you, Geno Smith's quote of, you know, when you think you have it bad, it's like, you know, our situation is a lot of other people's best case scenario. So we really have nothing to be um, getting getting stressed or sad over, even though I keep, I, keep, I just feel like I'm like so on the brink of crying at any given moment because of all the changes that are going on around here. But You need to be, uh, you need to be wearing sunglasses at all times. Yeah. Because you just so start weird. crying at the bank. Man, your kids, your kids growing up and like leave kind of like, you know, leaving essentially leaving you behind sort of is just like a real bummer it just yeah. is man well it's Dang. been our identity for so long yeah and that's really tricky so i'm gonna try to figure out how to coast into the role of like grandma eventually so i hope to just go from mom to grandma i need a hobby i have to start fly mm-hmm. fishing or something mm. something something relaxing something zen you know what i mean i don't think that's gonna help i think you're just gonna sit out there and contemplate I don't think dwelling is going to help either, though. No. All right. You want to wind us down <laughs> on that on that happy note? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to figure this out. We are. We Seriously, just though, don't have it figured out. I'm glad the kids got in here. Yeah, um, me too. Should though. we bring Kaimani in here, too, at some I point? So. I think so. If we can get him to to open up and and speak, he's so funny when you when the camera's at him. Yeah, he really is. When he's just yeah. being himself. And uh, I have a great connection with Kaimani. We have a great relationship. I think him... He reminds me so much of myself at his age. I mean, in, in a number of ways, it's it to like a, a crazy extent sometimes. So he's a good kid. He's also a very special kid. And he's the only one that hasn't been in here yet. So we yeah. should probably try to bring him in here. Typical well, he, middle child syndrome. Yeah. Well, he hasn't shown any major desire. Like we, we yeah. make sure that the kids have a desire and they ask mm-hmm. because if they don't, we don't want to pressure them or anything like that. So we'll see how he feels about it. But I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, Chip and Joanna. Yeah, Chip and Joanna. Still always welcome here. Um, next week, I think is we'll probably have them. Maybe. On. I it's I, it's around Christmas, and so we'll see. Possibly. <laughs> Speaking of, Merry Christmas, to everybody out there. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching and listening. Anything else you want to say, Mama? No, no. Merry Christmas. This has been so fun. This has been a really fun adventure that we've had this year, and I cannot wait to see what happens next year. I've got. We got one more podcast this year, yeah, this calendar year. But Merry Christmas in the meantime, and I uh, hope you guys all have a happy, healthy, and uh, safe week. Love you. We'll see you then. Take care. <laughs>